kids family dance. This is a dancing family and Woody can cut a rug, <laughs> even now. Uh, um, and then uh, you had uh, Butch and Marie and Bobby. Our mother, our mother died of childbirth with Bobby. And Jesse died of childbirth with Bobby. And then, uh, and then you met Sister. With who? With Oh, okay. Matthews. You lived with the Matthews, okay. And, um, well, Lorraine must have been a heck of a lady to take you and those kids on. <laughs> uh, she had one dude. Oh, she had Cindy. Okay. And then y'all had uh, Vivi and Sylvia and Scotty. Scotty. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, tell us about fishing. Uh, before there were outboard motors, how would you fi how would you go fishing? Well, most of the, my dad and most of the commercial fishermen had little one cylinder engines, small boats. Uh -huh. <coughs> Could you go offshore with those? No, we fished that fishing in the bay, mostly. In the spring, early spring, we fished for micro. Uh -huh. uh, this is uh, Butch, uh, Woody Jr., uh, Woody's son. And uh, I think, if y'all wouldn't mind, what, you can you can talk about what you want. But I think fishing, the uh, fishing, early fishing here is kind well, of. He, a, uh, he's he's not remembering a lot, but he's when he first started fishing, he was using he used a rowboat. Right there, they catch tarpon and mackerel. Oh yeah, well that's, that's they had one boat that pulled them out, didn't they, Dale? Yeah. That boat that pulled them out, and they pulled a had a big string of skiffs behind them, and they get out, get a little better, let them go. When it come time to come in, after they got the fish, it hooked back up to them and bring them in, but they would row out there with them. That's all I could always get my foot. <laughs> yeah. He was living, when he was living in Ragdown, he got up one morning, tell me I see him in Florida and Hopper on their canvas. What? Florida and Hopper on their canvas out there in Ragdown. That's when they moved, that's where they the first night here. Yeah, he woke up one morning and saw a canvas out there sail off an old sailboat. Well, I picked up the canvas up and there's heads on it. <laughs> it was hot in Florida. I never get him. I, uh, I worked with him when he boat base and worked for him and I got party boats in Florida. Robert was still still fishing. And I would go over and talk to him because he's a very knowledgeable old man about fishing. And he said, Butch, he said, I'm going to tell you something. He said, you got no depth card, do you, son? I said, no. He said, you got a lead line? I said, yes, sir. And he said, when you get out there and you lock that lead line down, does it taste like hot tamale turned or you too damn far south? That's, that's <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about Florida Roberts and uh, the Roberts family. Um, the Brundrit family, uh, they were I, here. They were here when they came and I came. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, the I uh, can't think of her name. Uh, but the 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 mama. Ellen? Uh, no. Uh, but she was married to. Uh, two Brundrets. No, one Brundret was George was married to to two or three ladies in the, in his time. And the Roberts that the Robert Survey and Robert Street are named after are Alfred and Godfrey's uh, uh, father, and so those were the Roberts that were here. And then Florida Roberts came. He was a Johnny Come Lately. Yeah, he he came. He was Johnny Come Lately. <laughs> so when you hear uh, of the Roberts family, that's why they call it Florida Roberts because. There was already a Roberts family here. And Roberts was Aunt Vi's mother's mother. That's right. And Viola was, she was a Vi, that's right, she was, was a Roberts. Was Elmore, bro? Who? Elmore, Elmore and Alfred. was Jamie's. Alfred she and. Was Mary, her aunt okay, 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 I got that. Okay. Well, we, we don't. Yes. Okay, so what is, who, her mother was married to. to Alfred. Alfred. Alfred Roberts. Delia. Delia. Uh huh. Are you Alfred's daughter, Viola? No. No. She was a Thompson. 
Okay, but weren't the top the Thompsons were Yeah, okay. Another old thing. And at one time uh, the uh, the larger community was over at St. Joe. This was before the turn of the century. And then there was a storm and some of those people moved to Port Aransas. And uh, that's that's how uh, yeah, the Brundrets and the Roberts, and maybe even the Mercers, uh, they came to Port Aransas after a storm in St. Joe uh, had wiped the little settlement out over there. And then uh, the settlement started up over here again. <laughs> and he's, he's got a revenge, I don't know. Uh, well, tell us, tell, tell, uh, tell us about the tarpon. Uh, tarpon, people don't uh, realize how plentiful the tarpon well, were at the time. Like Stinger and me, and you know, maybe we get a six foot string, go down to the dock, you catch a tarpon any time you want to. <laughs> yank him out of the water. Well, John Molina gives us a yeah. big bowl strap, we pull him and yank him out of the water. Which, were they eating fish or just no, they fighting didn't. fish? No, just pretty. They're good looking and they fought like them. Didn't we do that, Stinger? The Smith just tell me a lie. Huh? <laughs> don't, don't back him up, he's lying. <laughs> hey, lying, I'm a damn. <laughs> well, let's, let's, have, let's have Bill Sims and uh, Bill Smith join Butch up here. And Dale up here, too. And Dale. Come on, y'all, you guys come up here. Because Henry Olson was, he was everything. He was sheriff, he was mayor. That was after Henry died, yeah. But, uh, Henry, Henry, Henry was gone. Henry died young, you know? He was 55 yeah. when he died. Yeah, um... Uh, that right? Yeah, I went down to Greenwood and looked at him. I thought he was 10 years older than God. <laughs> well, now I'm older than he was. Yeah. Uh, Henry Olson was the younger, uh, younger brother of, um, Captain Teller's wife. Uh, uh, her name was Nellie. And, uh, the Tellers had, uh, a number of children. But Henry Olson was her younger brother. Uh, they were Swedish, but he, he was a, he was in the Coast Guard when he was young, and then he got out of the Coast Guard, I guess. And I guess to keep body and soul alive, he would just do whatever had to be done. But um, Bill, you were telling me one time about a, 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 a hurricane or a storm, and how Henry. Well, I just I just heard that story that uh, I don't know if it was 1919. What was know, that? Probably probably around 19. He went that old. Well, I don't, 20. Our daddy was born yeah, in 1908. I, I think Henry was only about a year or two older than Daddy. Do so you remember? Probably born in 1905, 1906. Okay, so let's say it was the 1919 storm. Well, it's one, one of those big storms. And a lot of people took refuge. I don't know if it was on Cedar Hill or, or, or you know, on the, on the higher sand hills, but I think it was, for some reason, I think it was Cedar Hill. Cedar Hill is, uh, you know, where Michael's is on Beach Street. There's the old, we call the old taxidermy shop. And that's one of the highest points on the island. It was called Cedar Hill because there was a bunch of salt cedars. And as growing up as kids, before uh, Ansel Brunder built that shop, it was a, a big hill, and we just that was the play. Everybody played there. It was a it was a magic place. But uh, oh, yeah, it was magic, all right. Best thing to build about it's magic. <laughs> when they played doctor, I think. <laughs> I got it. Uh, maybe I'm, I'm Maybe we ought to put out a, a uh, uh, like a Miranda warning here. If you have children, or if uh, you've got objection to uh, this, is going to be kind of I wouldn't say X-rated because I'm going to keep these guys in bounds, but it'll probably be a probably be a uh, chore. <laughs> talk about your brother now. Well, but 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 what I read, I mean, what I was told that that Henry Olson saved, uh, you know, that he would. You know, people got trapped in their houses and stuff like that during the storm. And Henry Olson was like 19, 
20 years old. He was young, but he was, you know, he's pretty, that he would slip off that hill and he would come back, you know, having, you know, bringing two or three people back that were, you know, in, in, in danger and all that. And, and everybody took refuge on that, you know, that were, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, that's the only thing that didn't blow away and, and all that. And that's, so he helped him. Uh huh. Daddy's second wife, Florine, was born in 1919 in March. She was a little baby when this happened, and they floated her on a mattress to her house over to where Bill stopped out on Cedar Hill. Cedar Hill. Wow. And there was nothing on Cedar Hill. It was just because it was high ground. Well, and 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 those cedar trees, you know, and it made. It was a natural protection because they would they would bend over and and, and there was little and all trees. that and they had little tunnels you know dug in there and uh, like a roof over you yeah yeah, yeah. and it was it was it was it was uh, you know for for the duration of the storm or something. Uh, Taylor, you know, back in the days when they're talking about have no fairy name to miss it, have a little fairy. He'd get out in the middle of that channel with the wrong head tied. He couldn't make it. <laughs> and he'd go, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> My dad and some of the other commercial fish, they'd go out and put the little, they had all, most of them had one cylinder engine boats. And three or four of them, tie them up and put them out of the trunk. <laughs> Come on, cross. <laughs> <laughs> it was really back at then. Uh, I used to start on this, so I don't think, because I had three beers. <laughs> I live on Mercer Street. Affluent neighborhood of Jackson, Jackson. It was the old movie. They're moving out now. <laughs> but about 300 yards, Willie might remember this guy, about 300 yards over from me. A daughter on the house, Scotty, we used to go up there to San Diego play. I don't know how many times we run over the roof of this guy's house, but his name was Forstein. Am I right? Yeah. And we come back, we always come back another way. We come back. That day, he had a regular door like this, but it was all full of sand. You almost had to crawl to go in there. <laughs> and so we said, hell, we think we'll go in there. Well, I was the littlest one. I was always little. <laughs> and they shoved my butt down in there. And I don't know if it was a one-bedroom or a three-bedroom or a four-bedroom, what it was, but I, it, was a, <coughs> it was plenty of room inside. And Don Roy had a package of Avalon cigarettes, really. They were that. They were real popular then, 15 cents back then. And some uh, matches with band wrapped around them. And he dropped them right there. The wood was still on it. And it sounded like a damn shotgun going off. The ball had run out of that damn thing. And to this day, and we never seen Mr. Forrest not here. This day when you go around a long time, and I don't know if he did in there, or if he moved the pipe below it, or where the hell he's at, but for a dollar, I'll show somebody where that house is. <laughs> Take one of them things, and I'll bet you a thousand dollars to hold on that you'll find a damn Walmart frying pan in there. I know, everything, everything but then, that's true, that's the truth, now isn't it Woody? <laughs> yeah. I'm not, yeah, I'm not saying no more till next year. I'll be in 77 if I'm here. I'm how, here. how old were y'all, Joe? Huh? How old were you back at this time? Oh, when I went over there? Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I must be about eight, nine years old. Uh -huh. yeah, you and Don Roy and, and uh, Scotty Jr. Scotty Oates. Yeah. Scotty yeah. Oates. I don't know. Well, I don't know. Daly. No, I never got into no crumple like that. Yeah. <laughs> no, we didn't take Daly. I'll tell you one thing. We didn't steal nothing. <laughs> but it had a dirt floor, and I swear to God, it was a, had a real long roof, and I don't know how many bedrooms was in there. Cause I didn't stay long. I know it didn't have a smokestack. There's there's a history of uh, you had Avon cigarettes or whatever that was. <laughs> I didn't. I wasn't with you because I had cedar bark. That's all I could. Well, we I, no, we was a little older because we outgrew cedar bark. We wasn't those <laughs> old cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta say, of all the stories I've ever heard, I've never heard of any of uh, any theft. There wasn't usually theft, but. I gotta say, y'all were a bunch of arsons, arsonists, and uh, uh, Bill Sims and Bill Smith have a story. Y'all were talking about a, a, a truck of a uh, Harold Listers. You may have burned Harold's car. Yep, that, that was me. Yeah. Me by myself. I take full responsibility. Okay. <laughs> Uncle Harold had. Well, I always called him Uncle Harold. They lived next door, and I was four years old. It was during the war. 
And uh, 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 I was just real bored. And I, like I say, I was four years old. This was 1943. And, uh, and I, 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 I went over to the Lister's house and there was nobody home and I just walked through the house like, you know, you could do any, any house here. Nobody, you know, locked their house or anything. And I found a box of matches. And uh, I walked out the front door and I'm just, you know, just trying to get into some kind of mischief, you know. And, and Harold had a Model A Ford sitting out there. He used it for a fishing car. And uh, I crawled in that car and there was some cotton sticking out of the seat, you know, kind of car. And I was just going to burn a little bit of cotton, you know, just to, you know, just to kind of, just to see it burn, I guess a little pyromatic or whatever the hell I am, you know, and I, and I lit that cotton, and man, it just started burning, and it was going, and I'm trying to put it out, and it ain't, it ain't going out, and boy, pretty soon this, this, this car is burning, and I run for the house, and I get into the house, and, and uh, Mama and Thelma, Thelma Teller, was sitting in the kitchen drinking coffee. I said, Mama, Mama, and I hope she had the door latch, and I couldn't get in the, couldn't get in the door. Why Finally, she, she came to the door, and boy, here's that car. I mean, it's just in flames, and it's burning. And, uh, and, and Mama called Daddy to pilot station, and Daddy called the Coast Guard. We didn't have that before we had the volunteer fire department. And the Coast Guard come down there, and they just took shovels and threw sand on it. And, uh, and put it out, but it burnt that car to a crisp. And I had a, I had a boil on my rear end. And, 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 uh, and Daddy come home and he got and he got Michael's uh, hairbrush. Boy, he bent me over. He busted that boil. Poor poor Harold Lister. Well, what what was this? How old were y'all when y'all vandalized the, the car at Galdings? Oh, that was about the same time. Uh, we got oh, we got mad at old Bob Galden. He he uh, we'd go in there and be, we'd finger the candy and stuff like that. He'd, He'd reach over the top of that candy counter and he'd pop us on the head just like that. And he'd say, get away, you know, pop us on the head like that. We, we were ticked off at him. And this so, is the two uh, bills. No, that wasn't really the way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is when they were okay, okay. They were stealing bottles on the back. No, we used to pick up bottles. They were worth two cents a piece back then, and that was a revenue generator because right. people would throw their bottles up, beer bottles, Coke bottles. And we'd take them to Galdings to sell. And he'd say, we don't take these, we don't take these, sir. I have a big pile, maybe he'd give us six cents, you know. And so we were mad at him. And he had a big panel truck that he'd go to town and get the groceries and bring them back and stock his thing. And he had a kind of a metal barn. Well, my grandpa had a barn, and we got some oil and stuff, and we were going to pour it in his gas tank. So Smith was the lookout man. He was standing at the door, and I was in there pouring that stuff, you know. And I said, is, it, is, he, is he coming? Is he? Well, somebody had seen us go in there, and they told Bob Gold, and he come out. And I'm pouring it with well, a lookout man. He, he sees him coming, and he runs off and leaves me. And I'm <laughs> <laughs> oh, coming. And so I look back, and here's this great big guy standing behind me. What are you doing? <laughs> and I wet my britches. <laughs> and I, I ran right between his legs and ran all the way home to my lookout man. But that's the last time I ever trusted him. <laughs> I was about nine or ten years old. He had a friend named Jack Pickens that had a ranch up in New Valley. And I had never been anywhere. I hadn't seen a train by then. <coughs> he took the deer hunt. Now they went deer hunting, but they had a, a, a camp around the fire there. And they were talking, they all got drunk. And they told me, said, son, now if you get a lost ball, we're up here. said, Climb that mountain, we'll come get you. Well, sure enough, I got lost out of wonder. Two days later, they found Your daddy said he was running my tail a couple times. I never let that 40 inch shotgun go, and I had six doves in my shirt. And that was it, was it? Last friend, his name was you John Nance Gardner. John Nance Gardner. That's what he took me to this He cracked up John to give me coats for the time. I didn't think he was coming to get me. <laughs> Did you ever figure you realize maybe they didn't want to? <laughs> you know, when old uh, Henry was the sheriff, 
me and uh, Scotty Oates. Yeah. Yeah, he did. He can say whatever he wants to about him. Anyway, <laughs> anyway <laughs> remember Leroy Smith? Yeah. yeah. He was with us. Scotty Oates, Don Roy. I don't know if he was with us or not, Tracy. Anyhow, we went down to Big Hill and shoot that pond at night. Well, they put me up on the hill. If anybody comes around, we'll holler or come down there and warn us, you know. Okay, okay that's what I'm going to do. And I sat up there and, boy, they were sneaking up on that pond. And I looked over and here comes, I see two people coming. And then I lit out. I'm telling you, I went to running down there and hollering, there's somebody coming, there's somebody coming. <laughs> we all took off. Martin had a recon, whatever, the four wheel drive truck. So Leonard Martin, that's what was in. And we all run to that truck. Well, here comes Scotty, you know. Oh, you're lying. He said, there's not nobody coming down there. And he went hollering. He went on back. Him and Leroy. No, Leroy Smith. Well, directly, here comes Scotty. <laughs> Boy, he was running. He said, there is somebody. There is somebody. Let's go. Let's go. We was waiting on Leroy. He didn't show up. Directly here he come with the two gang wardens <laughs> on each side. Got every one of them. They took every one of our guns. Oh. And, uh, Dale, do you, do you remember how to use the gun here? Yes. Do you really? <laughs> no. <laughs> but anyway, Joyce, they took our guns. That's the best plate of food ever. Duck get her spaghetti. That was the best damn stuff you ever eaten. Yeah. Well, you remember? Butch, let, let Dale finish his story. <laughs> They took our gun and took them to Henry Olson to turn them in. And the next day, Henry Olson gave them all back to us. <laughs> that was Henry. That's the way he operated. Took it all to jail one time and not made Don Roy and out of jail. You do? What did you take y'all to jail for? He gave me a run in that. You have to pay to go across the... The ferry? The fire block. you have to pay. About four or five of cars down there inside was just running. <laughs> we run across and turn around and run it back. <laughs> and I was almost out of gas. I told Don Roy, I said, Don Roy, I keep your eye on me. 